Hello everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about the theory part of the experiment 4 of your power electronics lab. So from the name of the experiment you can guess it right. The topic we are going to discuss today is a single phase inverter. So this is a basic diagram of an inverter. I think you all know how inverters work. In an inverter what we have, we have a DC input and in the output we get an alternating output, right? So today we are going to talk about different types of inverters. If you have gone through the lab sheets, you must have uh, seen that there are two types of inverters that has been demonstrated. One is push-pull inverter and another is age bridge inverter. So first of all, let's dive into push-pull inverter. Let's see the basic theory of push-pull inverters, how push-pull inverters basically give us the alternating output while we use a DC input. Okay, so this is the basic uh, circuit diagram of a push-pull inverter. Uh, from the circuit, we can see there is obviously a DC input source and we will be extracting our output from the AB terminal. And apart from this input and output section, we have here two switches, S1 and S2 and a transformer. So we will be using these switches and transformer to get our desired output. Uh, which is the alternating output in the AB terminal while we use the input as a DC source. So the push-pull inverter basically works in two modes. Uh, one is when S2 is on and S1 is off and another mode is when S1 is on and S2 is off. Let's see what happens when S2 is on. Okay, when S2 is on, the current will be in the primary side, the current will be go passing through this path. So correspondingly, uh, voltage will be induced in the primary coil and subsequently, the voltage will be induced in the secondary coil. Okay, so and subsequently we will have a voltage at AB terminal. So the voltage at AB terminal will be equals to the turns ratio into the voltage source. For simplicity, let's assume here the turns ratio is 1. So when S2 will be on, we can see from the figure that the voltage at the AB terminal will be equals to the Vs. So this will happen when S2 is on and there is another mode of operation when S1 will be conducting and S2 will be off. Let's see what happens then. If we keep the S2 open and we short the switch S1, the current will be now passing through this path. So correspondingly, there will be voltage induced in the primary coil, which uh, the direction will be opposite of the previous case. And subsequently, we will have uh, a voltage induced in the secondary coil and the direction will be obviously opposite. And if you look at the AB terminal, there we can, we can guess that the output voltage at AB terminal will be opposite of the previous case. Okay, so up to now, we can conclude that uh, in a push-pull inverter, when S2 is conducting, the output will be of positive. Uh, polarity and when S1 will be conducting the output will be of negative polarity so we can uh, experience alternating voltages at the output terminal so we are pretty much close to uh, accomplishing our mission of getting an alternating voltage using a DC source so the question is now that how can we control these switches it is obvious that we will not be controlling these switches manually right and from the previous experiments, uh, you all know that in such cases, uh, MOSFETs are used as switches. So in this case, uh, we will be doing the same. We will use uh, pulse signals in the switches so that we can get the two definite configuration when S1 will be conducting, S2 will not be conducting and when S2 will be conducting and S1 will not be conducting. Okay, from this graph, we can see that uh, we have uh, the gating pulses of S1 and S2 distinguished into different graphs. So, these two pulses we will be giving to the MOSFETs in the S1 and S2. So, correspondingly, what will happen? Let's see. When S2 will be conducting, we have already seen that the output voltage will be of positive polarity and when S1 will be conducting, we all know that uh, the po output voltage will be of negative polarity. So if we plot the curve here, we can see that uh, by using the switches uh, properly, we can get an alternating output voltage.
so we can say that our mission is, has been accomplished we have used a dc source and in the output we have gotten an alternating output voltage okay so this was the theory of push pull inverter so you might have a question now in your mind that why it is called push pull inverter right so the answer is if you look at the working principle of the push pull inverter when s2 was conducting the flux was in the in the primary section of the transformer the flux was in the downward side and when s1 was conducting the flux was pushed to the upward side as the switching takes place very frequently and the fluxes move from one section to another and we can say that one section pulls the flux to another section so that's the reason why this inverter is called push pull inverter and there might be another question in your mind that how could we use a transformer while we were using dc source so this is a task for you guys who have watched the video up to now so find it out how we could use a transformer yet when we were using a dc source right now let's move on to the next part we will be now discussing about the h bridge inverter don't get confused with the term h uh, here h doesn't mean half you uh, some of you might think this is about half bridge inverter which is actually not it's uh, let's see the basic diagram of a h bridge inverter so from the diagram you can see the shape of the circuit is like the english alphabet h so that is the reason why it's called the h bridge inverter and this inverter basically switches the polarity of the voltage applied to the load and the load here is connected between a v terminal so the output voltage between the a v terminal will be of alternating nature and from the diagram we can also see there are four different switches so the switches need to be controlled in such a way so that we can get uh, alternating voltage in between the a b terminal right like the push pull inverter this h bridge inverter also works in two modes one mode is when s1 and s4 is conducting and s2 and s3 are kept open and another mode is when s2 and s3 are conducting and s1 and s4 are kept open okay let's see what happens in the case one so from the circuit we can see that if s1 and s4 are kept open the current will flow th through this path and consequently the voltage at a b terminal will be of a positive polarity and it will be uh, pretty much of the source voltage okay now let's see what happens when s2 and s3 are conducting and s1 and s4 are kept open so when s2 and s3 are conducting the current will flow through this path so if you look at the a b terminal so the current is flowing in the opposite direction and the output voltage now is uh, is of the same magnitude but of opposite polarity right what we saw in the previous case so in this mode of operation we are getting same amount of voltage but in the opposite polarity like the push pull inverter in order to make it work perfectly we have to control the switches so in this case we will be again using mosfet switches so these switches needs to be given some pulses here s1 and s4 will be controlled by one pulse a generator and s2 and s3 will be controlled by another pulse generator let's see now uh, we have graphs of uh, gating pulses of s1 s4 and gating pulses of s2 s3 so we have previously discussed what will happen when s1 and s4 will be conducting and what will happen when s2 and s3 will be conducting now if you plot the output graph uh, between the a b terminal what we can see that when s1 and s4 are conducting we get a positive voltage as output and when s2 and s3 are conducting we get negative voltage as output eventually we are getting an alternating voltage at output terminal when we used a dc source in our input so that was the basic discussion about how push pull inverter and h bridge inverter works and i really hope now if you go through the lab sheet you will understand how the circuit is working and if you have any confusion you can 
reach out to me anytime so that was it from my side thank you very much thank you everyone